I study zooplankton, the small drifting animals in the sea that are at the mercy of the currents. Being able to study zooplankton in the Antarctic is a bit like being a child in a candy store because they're beautiful. They come in so many different shapes and sizes and colors. Things like krill, which are shrimp-like looking organisms. They are very large. They're as big as a shrimp that you might eat for dinner in the Antarctic. They're the main feeder or grazer on the phytoplankton, the microscopic plants. But they're also the main food source for all these penguins and the baleen whales and the albatross and, and many of the seals. So they are a crucial link in the food web. The climate in the Western Antarctic Peninsula is changing more rapidly than other places on Earth. And there's been a, a warming of the waters there. And because the ice cover has been decreasing, we're finding that there have been changes in the zooplankton community. One of the changes is there's been a decrease in the amount of krill. The juvenile or larval krill feed on ice algae that actually live on the underside of the ice. And so in the wintertime, there is no sun. It's dark all the time. When there are no other food sources, these larvae actually come up to the underside of the ice and scrape the ice algae and feed on it. This is what gets them through the long Antarctic winter. So as the ice goes away, then there's less food for these larvae, and so fewer of the larvae actually end up growing into adult krill. But what has also seemed to be happening is an increase in salps, these gelatinous zooplankton. They look like little clear barrels. Salps do much better in warmer waters, waters that are ice-free. The salps are expanding their range southward because the water is warming. Krill are much more nutritious food than salps. They're, they have much higher protein and fat content. Salps are basically bags of water. And if there is a continues to be a decline in krill populations, then that could lead to the decline of seals or whales or some of these other predators that are dependent upon them for food. My older son in particular, who's, he's 10, he very much wants to come on a research cruise with me when he's old enough, and I would love for that to happen. If he becomes a, an oceanographer and, and is working down there 30 years from now, I, I, don't, I don't know what it's going to look like, to tell you the truth. I think it's going to probably look very, very different. But of course, you know, I mean, the Earth is going through a big experiment right now, and we really don't know what the result is going to be. Mm -hmm.